Well, it seems like Deep Cool just loves the initials AK these days, as after the AK 620, Deep Cool has released the AK 400, which can hold 400 bullets instead of just a mere 47 bullets, which the gun holds. Well, sorry. Hey everyone, Mukul here. And yes, I'm trying my best to manage my hair. So yeah, the AK-400 is a single tower air cooler by Deep Cool, and it does look like half of what AK-620 looks like, quite literally. And this does replicate in the price too, as the AK-400 costs half of the AK-620. There are few changes though, as there are four direct touch heat pipes on the AK-400, as compared to the six don't touch me heat pipes on the AK-620. The single 120mm fan that comes with the AK-400 is also different, even though it tries its best to look the same. The fan has an entirely different name and has a darker tone overall, and it also has less of that matte finish on it. I also felt the AK-620's fans have a slightly better build quality too. But the fan air pressure is 2.0 mm H2O, which is a good number to have for a static air pressure fan. And they have also kept the four noise damping rubber pads on the four corners of the fans, because there are only four directions in this world. The heatsink design is similar to the AK620s. And the same plastic heatsink cover is used on this too. The thermal paste is also pre-applied on the base plate, and you don't get any extra thermal paste inside the box. But yeah, the cooler comes with Intel mounts that support LGS 1700 socket right out of the box. And this is definitely something Deepcool couldn't have afforded to miss at any cost when they started planning the packaged contents of the box. Both the Intel and AMD brackets are complete metal and are of excellent build quality. It was also pretty nice to see different color tones for the Intel and AMD mount standoffs and screws. And apart from these things, you also get an extra pair of fan clips inside the box in case you plan to put one more fan on the cooler for the push-pull configuration. And also a quite tiny but neatly laid out manual. Neatly laid out. Well, I'm going to test this cooler on the Ryzen 9 3900X and installing the cooler on an AMD platform needs the stock AM4 backplate which comes pre-installed on most of the AMD motherboards. You first have to install the plastic standoffs and then put the metal bracket on top of it. I personally prefer my air coolers to have a horizontal airflow, so I follow this orientation to install the bracket on top of these standoffs. After that, I tighten the four screws on the metal bracket on these standoffs and then I just checked if there is no free play on the bracket after I have tightened the screws just enough. So yeah, just another day of tightening the screws on top of stuff. And then I simply put the heatsink on the processor and tightened its two screws alternatively, just enough so that there is again no free play on the heatsink. And as you can feel, this was truly one of the most hassle-free air cooler installations I have done recently. So I do appreciate how Deepcool always tries to keep the installation experience as easy as possible, especially looking at their efforts of the past year or so. The only connection the cooler needs is from the fan to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. I mean, air coolers and their simple lifestyle. Also, because the fan clips are free to move anywhere, I make sure to put them in a way that the wire coming off from the fan extends out from the bottom of the cooler and sits right next to its header so that managing this one cable is easy for someone like me. The cooler has no RGB shells over it and clearly has been designed to just perform and look like how a decent air cooler will look nowadays, especially when you judge their look based on the current design trend. Um, that is if you know what the current design trend is. For example, I just dig how neatly they have embossed their minimalistic looking logo on the top plastic cover of the heatsink. But these numbers do indicate that the AK400 is supposed to be only good for processor that can stretch their maximum power consumption limit to 120 or 130 watts. Clearly anything above that and you would be making the chip print comfortably around 85 degrees Celsius or so, especially if you don't live in a cold region and your ambient temperatures can stay around 25 or 30 degrees Celsius or who knows even more. The cooler also performed better than the Tough Air air coolers, which I recently tested, and is cheaper than them too by a good margin. But of course, the dual tower AK620 and the single tower uh, Noctua NHU14S still outperform it by a good margin. And for almost double the price, thank goodness that they do. And for gaming around an ambient temperature of 33 degrees Celsius, the cooler managed to keep the processor's temperature around 70 degrees Celsius for the short test I did, which is actually good considering how warm the weather is getting here now. And I hate warm weather. So I need at least three of these.
So the cooler definitely performs well for its price, which is around 2300 rupees or 30 US dollars and in my opinion this is a darn good price for a cooler which can perform uh, something like this and if you are going to pair this with the Intel i3s, i5s and uh, the Ryzen 3s or Ryzen 5s then it should be able to do a fine job but that is still you have a well ventilated case as all of my tests were performed inside an open case so just don't let that fact go amiss from your puny brain sorry so this is about it for this review. If you like my efforts, then you can buy from the affiliate links, which I will post below. You can also hop onto our Discord server for more chit chat on relevant content. So stay safe humans. That's all for today. And definitely avoid buying the AK guns. Mewbot out.